Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to take a look at Arbo Lever, but this time around in the Ultra League. Of course, I already made a video earlier on for the Great League variant of this Pokemon. It's still the same Pokemon, just powered up a little bit further. So now we can take a look at the Ultra League. And honestly, it went way better than I expected with this team, which is something that is kind of nice, of course. But of course, this team kind of got hard carried by those very strong XL Pokemon of Greedent, which got buffed, which I kind of want to try out again. And of course, Deoxys, of course. I'll to try to kind of mirror the team that I used in the Great League video just to see how good the same kind of idea would be in the Ultra League. Spoiler alert, there is going to be more core breakers in the Ultra League compared to the Great League for this kind of team idea because, um, for example, something like the Giratina is going to be fine for the Greedent, but even though Arboliva is going to be a normal type Pokemon, you're still not going to have a positive matchup against a Dragon type Pokemon if you're part grass. So, um, yeah, it's still not really ideal. Poliwrath was also something that really screwed me over quite often with this team, but still. First set that I played with this team, I went 4 and 1, which I did not expect at all. The two afterwards, we're not gonna talk about it. In total, I think I went 8 and 7 with this team, which is, I guess, kind of fine. But um, yeah, again, Arboliva is not yet, at least, a decent Pokemon to use for the Ultra League as well, so a great league. But I feel like it has some potential. I kind of like the idea of having a normal plus um, yeah, grass type, but you need something better in terms of charge moves, especially here. For example, something like Body Slam, if it would learn it. I don't think it does learn Body Slam, but it would learn Weather Ball. So maybe something like this could help this Pokemon out. But also, why did Niantic give every single Pokemon Trailblaze other than the grass type Pokemon? that you run from the same generation where this move kind of got like introduced so I don't really understand this one like I don't know why this Pokemon didn't get Trailblaze but Seed Bomb as well as like I think Energy Ball Grass would have been actually way better than Energy Ball as well so yeah kind of kind of missed opportunity in my opinion I think it would have been way cooler if you could buff your own attack with this Pokemon because then Magical Leaf would do way more damage over time and Magical Leaf does in general a fairly decent amount of damage so that's that but still here we're going to take a look at this game we're going to see that our Greedon is going to go up against the Cresselia and of course if we get an early Crunch debuff we're going to be in a really good spot here as Crunch has a 30% chance to debuff the opponent's defense and we're actually going to get this which is really nice for me as now we only need two more crunches to knock out the opponent at this range as the debuff is coming in clutch here we're going to see the opponent going for the moonblast 10% chance to debuff my attack which would have been kind of the counterplay there for the opponent but this crunch is coming through gonna get the knockout and allows us to realign a little bit tricky for this team is going to be talonflame and charizard a pokemon that i basically faced in every second game with this team which is kind of wild like honestly the amount of charizard and talonflame i encountered was absolutely wild but here we're still going to be able to get a shield advantage again, which is really nice as Greedent was able to still get to a body slam in time. Perfect energy alignment there. And I'm gonna go straight for the charge move. So I force the opponent to at least use a shield here. I know that I lose the MP, but I know that they have two flame charges stored. So I can go for the psycho boost, gonna get the shield from them. And I can now use my own shield to keep my energy plus my health onto my Deoxys as I decide to swap out immediately. Greeting the Tabo Finny here, which we're gonna be able to kind of war with our Arbo Lever. So we're gonna be able to just take the Moonblast here. It's not gonna do too much damage. I guess it actually still did a lot of damage. But we can still go for a Seed Bomb here, which is going to get the knockout. And honestly, I kind of make a mistake here. I should have went for one more fast move first, but it doesn't really matter because it's still going to knock out the opponent. It's double resisted, but it doesn't matter from this range, so it's totally fine. But I could have went for one free fast move. As said before, I encountered so many Talon Flames and Cherry Zot with this team, which is kind of awkward and honestly you have to run Thunderbolt on this team sadly because you don't really have great answers for the Reggie still in the back and Thunderbolt is your best answer basically to deal with it so that's why we kind of run with it but otherwise I would have appreciated really to have Rock Slide just for all the fire flying type Pokemon I encountered with this team but it's still kind of okay he, of course, gonna get the debuff immediately, which is kind of sad, but it's okay. We can still try to use a shield here and hopefully farm them all the way down, as it seems like they gotta get another debuff immediately afterwards. So we're kind of forced to swap out into our Greedent, trying to get some energy and going for a body slam to knock out the opponent's Registeel, as we will get the Talon Flame out again, which is amazing for me, of course, as we know. Our Arboliva is still lurking in the back there, so we can go ahead and go for the body slam spam again. Kind of similar to the game prior, Greedent is going to put a lot of pressure onto the opponent's Talon Flame. Knowing that I can still survive another Flame Charge, Greedent is actually such a strong Pokemon. Like, if you can build a Greedent, build a Greedent. We're gonna get out the opponent's final Pokemon here in the Tapu Fini, which we can now hard wall with Arbor Lever again. And as we see here, we are just going to throw some leaves at them, and they're gonna go down fairly fast. 
Surf coming through, I don't really care too much about this one, and I can now go for the full farm down against them, as this should only be another Surf, so I can just try to go ahead and go for two Earth Powers, maybe even. Going for one extra fast move and then going for the Earth Powers, exactly the play that I meant before, you can just do it against Incinerate users, but actually you're still going to be able to reach another Earth Power in time as well, which is going to be only single resisted, that's why you go for it. And now the Greedon is still going to be able to go for a Body Slam. And they are forced to throw here, because if they don't throw, I can now align my Fast Move plus swap out and go for the Charge Move. This is like the awkward thing about 5-10 moves. And why I'm also kind of disagreeing on how the meta is currently shifted, because... Um, Basically, fast move attacks, they are all kind of treated equally, depending, like, not really caring too much about the turns, like, all do in, like, a certain range of energy duration and damage per turn. But I feel like there should be an upscale between, like, um, yeah, the more turns you need for a fast move, the more turns or like the more energy and damage you should generate for it, in my opinion. Because right now we're going to see, like we see in general, a huge increase of like one and two fa turn fast moves just because they are better to catch, they are better to maneuver, they are better just to align your fast moves against the opponent's fast moves. And you don't really see anything above that, which is kind of something that I would wish at least that Niantic tries to... Figure this out a little bit more, give us maybe a more decent 3, 4 or 5 turn fast moves and um, not only like really treat those 1, 2 turn fast moves the entire time because like yeah, you have counter, you have shadow claw, you have mud shot, you have psycho cut, you have so many fast moves that are 1 or 2 turn, dragon breath, like all of them that are super common in the current meta or like in general in any meta. And you don't really see anything above it. You see some three turn moves like Dragon Tail and Snarl, but that's basically it as well already. And for third turn moves, there's a Volt Switch, and that's basically it. And four turn moves in general are so bad to align because you're always going to allow the opponent to get in a two turn fast move for free, no matter what you're gonna do. So I feel like there should be kind of more of a buff towards like three, four, and five turn moves just to have a little bit more of a balance in the meta in general. But here we're gonna see another two turn move against us with the Powder Snow against us as well here. We can use a shield against the opponent with a ball. It's still going to be a little bit of a tricky game here for the end game, as we're going to have to hit still, I think, two charge moves against the opponent here. As I'm going to use a shield and they go for the dazzling beam. This is amazing for us. This was basically our win con. And now we have to try to farm down these Steelix without them getting to two breaking swipes. One breaking swipe is okay. It doesn't do too much damage because we are very bulky as well and it's non stab. But we have to still hit a Thunderbolt as well as a Psycho Boost. And I go for an extra fast move, which was a little bit risky to be fair, but I think it was worth it. As now the Psycho Boost comes through and we can now knock out the opponent. So, and moving on into the next game, we're going to encounter the Charizard in the lead. We're going to now see that we can just stay in here, go for either Thunderbolt or the Psycho Boost, but they decide to swap into the Reggie Stealer, meaning we are forced to stay in here. It's basically our best answer for the opponent. And maybe I should actually swap out eventually into the Greedent though, but um, here I'm going to stay in. I'm just going to let this move go through. It's going to be the Zap Cannon and they're gonna get another attack drop here immediately. So I think 343 three are getting the attack drop, which is fine, like it's, it's kind of still an odd, so like it's okay. But um, I think the next one actually was kind of lucky for me because I don't think it gets the debuff, which is really important, so. It's totally fine, it's kind of what the odds are supposed to look like for the opponent's zap cannon as we're going to see the opponent's cherry zap coming back in. They have a ton of energy, so I'm going to use my shield immediately, and they're gonna go for the blast burn, so that was definitely a wise shield as this would have done a ton of damage. And Greedent is going to be able to survive one blast burn, but also Greedent is one of the spammiest Pokemon in the meta, allowing us to definitely get um, two more body stamps off here no matter what the opponent tries to do. And the cool thing here as well, um, the switch talk is coming up eventually. I'm going to be able to still reach another one, and I don't think there's just a blast band, but I can now swap out into my Deoxys, go for the Thunderbolt Snipe. This Thunderbolt Snipe is going to be able to get the knockout against the opponent in comes the Giratina, where I can still go for a Psycho Boost, which does a lot of damage, actually. Okay, not really that much. It's, it's a decent amount of damage, okay? Like, everything counts here in this scenario, because it kind of only do resist the damage with our fast move here with Abo Lever. Of course, the opponent does double resist the damage so that's nice but dragon claw still chunks quite a bit and we are not going to go straight for the next charge move here because i'm going to try to wait out until they throw another charge move so i can swap out into my greedon and try to get the defense drop first i know that i wouldn't see him here anyway like the opponent's giratina is one of the bulkiest pokemon in the meta so there is not a lot that they can do about this one and here we can still gonna get to the crunch this is gonna get them very low as it's going to be super effective and we're gonna get the defense drop as well which is amazing they're still forced to throw i would have got to another crunch in time and as we will see here i can still go for the earth power and arbor lever it's going 
going to be able to win this game for us. So this was the first set that I had, like all the battles that I had from here. Now we're going to go to the next set coming up. Uh, only a few more battles, of course, because it's Ultra League and Ultra League takes quite a long time. And also this is not really the team that you should copy anyway, because again, I believe it's not really a meta pick. I think it's like somewhere in the three, rank 300 or something. Still, it's a fun Pokemon to use. Like, honestly, still, I had a lot of fun playing this Pokemon. Here we're actually going to encounter a Gengar, which I respect. Kind of hope for the leaks being true or like the what well, I showcase as well. Basically, that Gengar is coming as a shadow Pokemon eventually or like at the end of this month, which would be really cool. So that would be really nice because Gengar is like one of the Pokemon that I really like. Yeah, I make a huge mistake because I didn't pay attention to the battles. I'm sorry about this one. I just had to stop into my Deoxys. Why did I do this? Like, honestly, they have a Surfage in the back and this is my only answer for Surfage. So I'm just giving up my... Um, best answer for that but yeah again you should maybe pay attention to the battles that would help out quite often as you're going to see the Isaac spear coming through we can still go for the thunderbolt this thunderbolt is going to get the knockout but it's still going to be the surf edge against our last three pokemon and i decided to let this move go through because i think that our believer is going to do enough damage with magic leaf here already just to knock out the opponent's surf edge with that one and as we can see here we can use a shield Night Surge comes through, and I thought that I would still get another free fast move in, which would do damage, and then I can match shot them down. But I don't, but I'm still going to be able to survive another one, and Arbor Lever is going to be able to farm down the counter user, which is kind of ridiculous. But we're going to take a look at the next one. Great lead force, they're going to have the Alolan Sansa here in the lead, and they decide to swap out into the Tentacruel. Again, I kind of misplay this. I should go first for the Thunderbolt and then for the Psycho Boost. I decide to just go for two Psycho Boost back to back. Just getting a shield advantage as well, so I'm going to be able to just get some damage onto them allow me to swap now into my Greedent which does super effective damage with the fast move much shot, of course as we're going to be able to just go for the body slam spam they got the attack debuff immediately with Scald, which is kind of unfortunate for me. I can still go for another body slam against the opponent though, but again, it was Team Petai, which is kind of not the smartest idea by me. And they don't get the attack debuff here, which is kind of nice for me, because now, still, the body slam is going to be able to two-shot the opponent, allowing me to either get a shield or switch advantage, but I actually get both of them. Like, no matter what, um, they're not, never going to be able to get um, switch advantage here anyway, because I would have just used a shield afterwards, and I still would have been able to get to a move. But here, body slam coming through. I have to let the opponent farm me down because my only answer for the opponent's Charizard is going to be my Deoxys and like this I'm forced to use a shield it's going to be the blast burn and it's going to be a very tough matchup I'm gonna still get to a Thunderbolt this Thunderbolt is coming through gonna get the shield from the opponent they mostly want to swap out eventually but let's see I'm going to use a shield it's going to be the blast burn again which is nice and they swap out into the sand slash allowing me to actually keep some energy which is nice and I should have stayed in for a little bit longer. They just got basically to the move there. I think I could have went for like two more counters, which would have been super helpful. Because now I get the opponent low here. But um, it's just barely low enough for the opponent that is only one counter to knock them out. And like this, I am just barely not able to go for the Thunderbolt. I'm not sure if a Psycho Boost would have done enough. I don't think it would have because it's a normal variant against Shadow Variant for sure. But I think against the normal variant, it still would have survived. So... That was most likely a misplay by me, losing the game there, but good game to the opponent. As we can hardball the next opponent here. We're gonna have the Tapu Fini, and our believer can just go for the charge move here. It's going to be the Seed Bomb, getting a ton of damage onto them. I can still take a Moonblast, as we saw already before. This is not gonna knock me out, and also, now most of the incomes, the opponent's Alolan Sand Slash. And this is going to allow me to still go for the Earth Power, and this is exactly what also happened in the Great League variant. Of course, Great League video for this Pokemon is going to be at the end cut as well, so just a few more seconds here. So we're gonna see the debuff even from our Bolivar, allowing us to get the opponent insanely low, low enough that we can much shot them down or counter them down, but they decide to swap it out into the Charizard, allowing me to go for the Psycho Boost, which is a smart decision because now we kind of put them into pressure for either counter later on but like now for body slam of course this body slam is a very spammy move it's still going to hurt quite a bit and we're gonna get the shield here immediately which is amazing i'm going to use a shield myself as well it could be a, the dragon claw it is a dragon claw but i'm totally fine with that i'm just going to use my shields on my greedent and i don't think i'm really missing out on anything with that decision here as you're gonna get the opponent insanely low i can use another shield here if it's a blast burn it's a blast burn it is a blast burn which is nice and now body slam spam is real gonna get the final shield by the opponent i don't really have a 
love health left. I can go for another body slam. It's going to be a CMP tie. So Charizard is gone. Our Greedent kind of gets incinerated here as well. But we're still going to be able to get the knockout here. Now it's only the Sandstitch in the back. And that's going to be it for today's video. Again, our Believer needs kind of a move update. But it has some potential for the future. So maybe keep some around just in case. But that's going to be it for today. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you then. Bye-bye.